Okay, now we're going to talk about many, many, many things related with this Bitcoin phenomenon. And I put this a la carte menu. And why is that? Because what, what we're going to do is a list of many, many things, really. And some of them, believe me, we can develop it in a particular class or seminar or a conference. And one of those, we're going to develop it in a different video, okay? But let's have this idea of all the things we're going to talk to realize how big is this phenomenon and how it's affecting many, many, many aspects of our life, our humanity. First, I want to reshape and I want to enhance my recommendations for this particular sections. We have to be more critical, more skeptical, and from, from now on, well, more constitutional creative. Some remarks, okay. Monopoly of the state's own legislation, money issuance and exercise, legitimate violence or justice, but subjected to law, or at least that's how it should be. Respects of human rights, fundamental rights, constitutional rights, entitlement or main guarantor or potential violator. Who's the potential or most potential violator of these rights? The states. We have to rethink also about sovereignty, also territoriality and digital cyber crypto space. I remember talking uh, about uh, the idea of states and how Hans Kelsen had this idea of the territory of the states is what the constitution says. So what's the territory now considering these digital spaces under the idea of Hans Kelsen? That will be a good uh, talk. So we can also talk about secularization 2.0 from church to state to digital society. So when we talk about digital societies, we're not talking just having this idea under the scope of the states. We have to rethink how the states as a political actor that came after the idea of the church, how it's going to be understood. So also we have to have in mind technology, progress and evolution. Remember the this movie, El Gato Pardo? Don't remember how is it in French? Le Gepard, Le Pard, I think it is called. So everything changes, so nothing changes. When we talk about digital transformation, it's not only taking technologies to keep on doing the same things that we're having. We can't accept having our primitive idea, primitive culture, and having technology to that because we are going to keep on doing the same uh, primitive things. So we have to rethink the idea of many institutions with this digital transformation. Again, we have to re-read, rethink legal, constitutional, and political institutions. One of that is, well, who watches the watches? If we allow that this technology, like it's happening in, in China, it's used to control the citizens, we're going to end up with another situation of uh, autocracies with uh, like the monarchies, absolute monarchies, the same absolute states. So technology has to be used to watch the watchers and not on the contrary. The idea of a state and its justifications. The state was justified the creation of the state, how we control it right now, and how we know it right now, is because of the the absolute powers of monarchies long time ago, okay? 
well, you are now in France and uh, you know what's going on or what happened during the French Revolution and how it was the state again, okay, the, the, the state how we know it right now and uh, how ended up with the ancien regime. So this, what we're living right now, it's going to be a new regime, a digital regime. That's how I see it. And that's how I was studying it from the constitutional law perspective. Okay, so the limitation of powers, again, what works a constitution for? We have to th see how do we exercise and we enhance the exercise of fundamental rights in the digital era. Freedom of expression, access to information, freedom of association, property, privacy and intimacy, identity, free development of personality, free movement of person and good, due process of law, and access to justice, a fair justice, not the justice we're seeing in some of our countries. And of course, the right of democracy or right to democracy. What do you want or what do we want in general? Trustful or trustless societies. In crypto culture, we have this trust, don't trust, verify. And this comes from a, from a joke that was between Gorbachev and Ronald Reagan. Let's stop here for a while. Alvaro de Maria, he's a Spanish author. He has this book, Philosophy of Bitcoin. I had the chance to meet him personally. And in uh, Madrid, we had the opportunity to have uh, an activity. And I talked with the reality in Venezuela, really interesting. And I want to read a little bit on this because it's contained in his book. Bitcoin is a torpedo to the state's waterline. States safe have three ways of financing their expenditures, through taxes, through public debt, and through inflation. Inflation is an increase in the money supply. The increase in prices is a consequence that can follow from this. Bitcoin attacks all three lines. How we can see Bitcoin has idea, the philosophy of Bitcoin. Yes, it comes to help us, to push us, to rethink the idea of a state and its justification. Consider it all the previous said, let's have these things we're going to talk. I'm just going to very, very shortly mention it because has referred each one of these can be developed in a particular seminar, congress, paper, activity, or program, okay? The first one, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, altcoins, and cheat coins. Well, money is a convention. We'll see how blockchain is evolving from... Uh, blockchain 1, blockchain 2, 3.0, okay? We have Polkadot, for instance, or uh, we have the, the case of Ethereum, smart contracts. Second aspect, really important, public keys, private keys, custody, non-custody wallets. That needs a lot of research. Not only the technological part, but the philosoph philosophical part not your keys, not your crypto. Crypto exchange and trading. Well, but changing what? Trading what? Into what? We'll see how regulators, what they try to regulate are mainly, we'll see in it in, 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 in cryptocurrencies world, the exchanges because it is the link within their let's say traditional traditional analogic world world with this crypto world so what if we stay in defi exchanges smart contracts this is an issue we have to study 
we have to develop, we have to in enhance our status in smart contracts. And more you that are directing and studying the phenomenon from the artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence and smart contracts. And not only the coding, how it will reshape our relationships, our social relationships. Uh, ICOs, interesting too. Decentralized autonomous organizations. We see the right, the fundamental human right of association. This enhances that fundamental right of association and not supported, even can be in some moments against what the states want to well, pretend us to do. Uh, in Venezuela, they are blocking the, the non-governmental organizations. This will be a good idea for that. One of the examples, we didn't come to the end, was this DAO created to buy one sample of the constitution and they raised enough money probably to do that. So we'll see how this works. Internet of things. Again, artificial intelligence, uh, internet of things. I guess we need to uh, enhance our studies of that. Obiquitous computing, because we are used to see computers all over, telephones, uh, smartphones, tablets, cameras. But what, what about we don't see? It's everywhere. Computing is going to be everywhere. Cloud computing and cloud storage, decentralized storage. There is a particular case. I don't think we have time here to develop it completely, but cloud computing is important because our all our information is going to be cloud-based, but who has access to that? So we have to be really careful on that. Digital ID, personality, proof of, of humanity. It has to be studied also from the perspective of fundamental rights, constitutional rights, constitutional law. The idea of identity and sovereignty in digital cyber crypto space. We have Natalie Smolensky, who has a wonderful work on that. She is in the United States, specifically in Texas. Interesting, this studies, uh, studies and this approach, privacy is power. So we have to uh, be really, really, really cautious about this. Recently, a uh, few days ago, we'll see the, in the news that Italy forbid all interaction of chat GPT in Italy because supposedly infringes the normative and regulations of privacy. So that's why we have to study it from the perspective of constitutional law. This is really important because it's going to be linked to another class we're going to have. NFTs, the famous non-fungible tokens. This example, the sample of NFT was sold in 69.3 million dollars. And what's NFTs? Well, we do know more than I do about this. What important is, the important thing is, is NFTs are not regulators, but this Mika law, it is excluded. So it is important to see what's going on and we will have, we will see soon with these NFT projects. Uh, there in, in Paris, you have this author, great, Laurent Gaillard. He has these nice, uh, important uh, books uh, recommended for you to have it. And professor, if you can contact him for him, it will be good to have him in your classes. Web3, another interesting uh, phenomenon. And decentralized applications. We need to study that from the perspective of constitutional law beyond legislation. Accountancy and taxation. Probably I'm very sure that many, many, many of you have been asked about, well, 
where is taxation there? Well, remember what uh, uh, Jesus said when he was asked if he had to pay the taxes or not? Well, he says, well, ready to ego soon, Caesar's, Caesar's day day or what's for God to God. Well, and what's Satoshi's to Satoshi? This is another important aspect of this uh, uh, phenomenon. Decentralized justice for us is really, really hard to understand and have an idea of justice not coming from the states. And this project is doing it. Cleros is a decentralized, decentralized conflict resolution supported on blockchain. So many of these uh, situations that we'll see it will arise could be solved. This conflict could be solved using platforms like Cleros. I'm inviting you to see uh, the, the papers and to see the, the videos of Federico Ast. He's the CEO of Cleros. I had the opportunity and sharing with him in, in Paris and uh, some videos. Uh, it's open for you if you want to see them. You're more than invited to do so. Again, justice without a state, just in, within the state, a state within the state. We have to rethink it, the functions and the justification of the states. Digital, judicial file, record and institutions, droit procedural. Uh, one of the, this, the, the research areas that I've been to is how this digital transformation can reshape the idea of procedures and procedural law. And of course, let's come back here for you uh, that you're studying the Master of Artificial Intelligence. I've seen a lot of papers and a lot of uh, um, people interesting in studying procedure, justice procedure, and uh, artificial intelligence, how it will um, match or it will uh, risk the, 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 the lawyers and the judges. It will have the risk of losing their work, their jobs. Decentralized finance, of course, anti-money laundering. And that's another issue we have to research a lot. I'm totally against the compliance culture. And not because I will be encouraging uh, committing crimes and so on. But the thing is that when we talk about the idea of regulators, who are the regulators? Is it legislative or is executive? And we'll see how regulators, they, they, accent, they, 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 they exaggerate their powers. And they usually commit abuse of power. So if we have a compliance culture of following any single rule that is not created for the exercising our liberties, we're going to have new monarchies, absolute monarchies or regimes that we see in some other places. Again, the regulation and compliance. Why regulate? What regulate? Who regulates? To whom? And who's the compliant? So we have to comply all the time or we have to fight for our freedom and control the controller. Again, who watches the watchers? Technology has to be used in order to control the power, to control the state. That's constitutional law. Again, regulatory compliance. Exists such a thing? And what is it? It's a private law, public law, a new law created for by regulators and not legislators. Okay? Can legislation freely delegate such, uh, such powers to any those peoples? So we have to a lot of a lot of work we have to do on this compliance thing. Again, police states in digital, crypto spaces. Remember that movie over here? Okay, so we have controlling states, police states, 
like going on what's going on in in like what's going on in China or Venezuela or many of us and we don't know exactly because we don't realize how are we being controlled by the states and here we can have uh some reflections I'm from Venezuela as you know and I remember a couple couple years ago they were saying, well, Venezuela is the most better regulated. And we'll see what's going on with this regulation. Recently, a couple of days ago, we have this all this scheme. We have this guy, Joselit Ramirez. He was the superintendent of cryptocurrencies in Venezuela. The unfamous, famous or inf infamous uh, PetroCoin. It's a sham. It's a scam. Uh, we'll see how he was uh, promoting, among other guys. This guy was, uh, his, his name is uh, Ubel, I'll see it over there, Hubert Roa. He was a deputy, but also he was a minister of technology. All this about the Petro stuff. And we will uh, be free from the empire in the United States and so on. And what happened a couple of days ago? He they were put in jail by the same uh, government, uh, Venezuelan government, Maduro's government regime. So we'll see how this crypto thing shouldn't be regulated by legislation. It should be regulated by their own norms, which are the technological ones. Again, all this, he was uh, the police anti-corruption detained this uh, deputy, deputy. Also linked with this prostitution thing. Of course, okay, I'm not mentioning anything of the case. I don't know the exact dates. All this is from the news. So we'll see how in Venezuela the idea of crypto was used more in crime, but by the same agents of the states. Again, we'll see here recent dimensions of the phenomenon. Still, at the moment, um, having this uh, activity, this seminar, still we have the war, Russia, Ukraine, and we'll see how Bitcoin is being used to relieve some of the, the victims of this aggression of Russia. Stable coins and central bank digital coins. I have a paper on that. Uh, professor, I can send it to you if you want to, to, to realize a little bit my, my, my research on uh, cryptocurrencies, especially created by the states. And it's going to be used again for new kind of despotism. Professor John Kane had the chance to have a brief conversation uh, with him, and he is studying, he's researching oh, how China is going to be developing this uh, digital yuan in order, not for freedom, but for control. Metaverse, Decentraland, and others. These cases, I'm just going to mention it. If you we want, if you want, we can prepare a specific class or seminar for this. The cases of Ross Ulbricht, the Silk Road, uh, Silk Road uh, case. This is also interesting. The Bitfinex. I had the chance of reading the news, and then go to the page of the Department of Justice, and then download the the court order. Really interesting, and it deals mostly, we'll see that in order to prosecute these persons, what they do, they went through their wallets and they have the permission of a state, of a court, the United States court, and issue a warrant authorizing the seizure of those funds. But how they did that? Well, they could go, here it says, 
to the cloud storage account. So that means that all the services of cloud storage is open for the state to look up, to search what we have there. What is our privacy? Okay, again, another case, it will be Sebastian Bacho de Jardin, Networker, another, uh, another case that we can discuss. GameStop, Reddit, uh, Robinhood, another case we can talk. And we're running out of time, so uh, let's move forward a little bit. Um, all these are some uh, aspects and themes we can develop. Property, smart property, property has a service, civil participation, elections, democracy, digital citizenship, smart cities, and the idea of law and authority with this new idea of cities. Privacy versus publicity, distributed social networks, streaming services. So an attempt for a conclusion. The conclusion is yours. We are in this new era, new digital transformation era, and we have to rethink a lot of legal institutions. The idea of this presentation was just presenting some issues that then we could develop independently or probably work together on that. Now we are facing new challenges with this uh, artificial intelligence uh, platform, ChatGPT 3, 4, multiple opinions we have. Should we stop that? Should we ban it? What are our rights? We have to rethink our fundamental rights, our constitutional rights and constitutional justice. That's my approach. That's the thing that I develop the most. And here, there are other things that we can do for with these phenomenon. Okay? I just put in it in order to, to, to rethink a lot of things. Uh, insurance, crypto, health, technology, state planning, wealth management, what else? Legal services, liberal professions, individuals, culture, education, regulation. Who's the authority? Is it the authority subjective or objective? The legislators, the judiciary, of course, constitutional law. Again, my personal approach is that we have to reread, rethink, a lot of our institutions, our legal institutions, doing like uh, CIA did. We have to rethink us as a third state. We have to think probably the complaint has a new form of despotism. We have to rethink the idea of regulation and compliance. And right now, like happens during the French Revolution and CIS, we have a new digital society. We have a new third state, a new digital society. But this one is digital and universal. We have a new digital society, a new third state. What we do? Well, we have to rethink how our fundamental rights, our constitutional rights have to be enhanced and not controlled by technology. Again, my proposal is having a program of constitutional law and fundamental rights of blockchain. Now on, we have to add the idea of intelligence in artificial intelligence and digital transformation. And again, like us that study, uh, this crypto phenomenon, if you don't believe me or you don't get it, I don't have time to convince you. That's what Satoshi Nakamoto said just before uh, many, many of these uh, phenomenon realized and had this launch. And finally, thank you all for allowing me sharing this experience, these thoughts, these reflections, and this uh, 
research by and I'm open to any of your your questions. <laughs>